Alright, we're doing WWE Clash of the Castle here. We start off with Bianca, Asuka, and Alexa Bliss versus Damage Control. Uh, loving the crowd here. We got about 65,000 people. The arena looks great. I hope, I really hope they keep this pay per view. Like, it sucked, you know, it being at 1 p.m., but it's so worth the crowd and all the experience you get from it. I always love the UK crowds. The UK crowds, the Canadian crowds are always the best. Uh, the crowd is loving Bailey. Uh, we get a drop kick to the barricade by Dakota Kai. Code red by Alexa. Oscar uh, hits a couple of spinning back fists to EO. I love any time Oscar and EO are going at it. Also, I'm a big uh, fan of the name Damage Control. I think it's really cool. Uh, and their theme is okay, honestly. It's tight. It's tight. Uh, we get a moonsault to the outside by EO Shirai. Then we get the Tower of Power spot with all the women in the corner. A scorpion kick by Kai, hit the moonsault, and damage control wins the match. Very good decision. This is also um, Bianca's first pin in a long time, probably like eight months or something like that. Bianca has not been pinned in a long time. Uh, this elevated the story. We're going to get Bailey and Bianca. They're going to finish their feud right where it took off from the pandemic era, which is uh, smart to see. Uh, this should be all good stuff. Like I said, it's so. So weird to actually sit there and enjoy the WWE product. Like, everything they're doing has just been pretty damn fun. Then we get Sheamus versus Walter for the IC title. This was my second favorite match of the night. It would have been first, but I really like that Seth Rollins Riddle match. But this match was great. The only thing was missing was Sheamus having his old theme back. I hope he gets that back soon. But we get Fabian Eichner back. We have Imperium back together. I'm telling you, Triple H, every time I see TV, he fixes something. A uh, big fight breaks out. Scoop slam on the steel steps to Sheamus. That had a suck. Uh, big chops and stiff Kikusa kicks to Sheamus. Sheamus keeps fighting back. Sheamus fights back with about 21 beats of the Baldrin. Uh, and then he hits a King Kong knee drop from the top for a near fall. Sheamus hits a V trigger. White noise after that for a near fall. Uh, Walter with a big drop kick and then a power bomb to Sheamus for a near fall. Uh, Walter's, you know, chopping the living shit out of him. His chest looks like it's made out of ground beef. And Sheamus busts out the old high cross. I popped huge. I, I used to love the when Sheamus used to do the razor's edge. Uh, freaking crazy, man. Uh, Walter with another power bomb. Sheamus just keeps getting up. And basically, they looked at each other, and you could tell I like that. So, like, Walter looked at him, he's like, I don't know what I got to do. Sheamus is just barely telling him to come on. Walter eats him with a lariat. One, two, three, fantastic match. Absolutely everything that I wanted or could have asked for. It's, it's legit everything that I wanted in this match. I knew this match was going to be fucking great. Like, it's so weird seeing matches like this on the main roster now. Like, this is crazy. Oh my god, Sheamus has get to deserving so standing ovation. Sheamus has been the MVP for a long time, man. Sheamus has just been putting good matches after good matches for a while. Uh, we get Shayna Baszler versus Liv Morgan for the SmackDown Women's title. This was a good match to see because finally they stopped booking Liv like a pussy. Like, I knew Triple H was going to, you know, take a little time to fix Liv, and it feels like this match definitely helped out. Uh, Shayna's working the arm, uh, we get a V-trigger by Shayna, uh, Liv keeps going for her own arm, uh, aiming for, uh, Shayna's arm, uh, big running knee by Shayna for a near fall, uh, Liv hits a power bomb and the Oblivion for the win and a clean win here, which is very su surprising, I really thought Shayna was gonna beat the living shit out of Liv. Uh, we get a really fun match here, too. Ray and Edge versus Damian Priest and Finn Balor. Uh, the Judgment Day versus Team SmackDown back in the day. Uh, Edge is so fucking over. They are, they're singing his whole entire theme song. And you could tell this man got caught off guard big time. We definitely feel like we're in Edge's retirement tour. Uh, we got a Broken Arrow by Damian Priest for a near fall. Uh, Finn Balor with a random scissors kick. For uh, another near fall. Execution by Edge. Then Edge ends up using the 619. I don't, I don't know what the Canadian area code is. Uh, Ray with a splash, but the Finn Balor kicks out. 
Uh, Edge with a spear through the ropes. I definitely would not be doing that with Edge's neck. Uh, Rhea ends up beating the shit out of Dominic. Uh, 619 and a spear for the win. Very fun match. But this is the part that I like. They did something cool here. So the whole match, Dominic, Dominic and Rhea have been interfering. Dominic has been trying to help them win. And you got Edge and Ray celebrating while Dominic's just in the background. Even though you can clearly tell he helped them in this match. And he's just in the background doing nothing. And you just see him seething. So I'm like, oh, he's turning in. So yeah, he low blows Edge and then uh, clotheslines. He stiffed his own father. Jesus Christ. He fucking let that man have it. He said JBL style close up for Bell. And yeah, I guess Dominic, I don't know if he is going to officially join the Judgment Day, but we'll see. Then we get my favorite match of the night, Seth Rollins versus Matt Riddle. Uh, again, it's so nice to call him Matt Riddle and Austin Theory and actually have Tommaso Ciampa back. We got the names back, people. Give me Biggie Langston and then we're talking. Uh, but this was good stuff. This was my favorite match of the night. Guys are going right at it. We got a buckle bomb to the barricade by Seth, which I'm pretty sure he hasn't done that since the Finn Balor bullshit. Uh, super kick by Seth for a near fall. Draping double foot stomp to Riddle. Top rope Falcon's arrow, but then Riddle turns it into the transition into a fisherman's buster for a near fall. Uh, whispering the win on the outside by Riddle. Uh, GTS power bombed and a V trigger. Uh, by Riddle for a near fall. Seth ends up hitting the neutralizer, which they called Riddle's move, which obviously was not Bo Derek. That was the neutralizer. Uh, Chelsea's grin into another Chelsea's grin into the perfect pedigree, but Riddle kicks out. Uh, Seth Rollins hits a Randy Orton draping DDT, hits a stomp. Then he basically gets up, hits the super stomp from the mid rope for the win. This match was awesome. It made Seth look like the star that he is. It's been a long time since so we've put some respect in Seth Rollins' name. Then we get to the main event. It is Drew McIntyre versus Roman Reigns. Oh, I really wanted Drew to win this match. I understand, you know, whatever. But the crowd support, the vignettes, the fucking man had broken dreams, bro. I've been waiting for this moment. For so long as a Drew McIntyre fan. Oh, WWE Universal World title on the line. Uh, Cross ends up distracting Drew. Throws a water bottle at him. That's about it for him. Roman finally takes control. Because Roman's getting his ass whipped the whole time. Uh, fucking Nasty's Glasgow's kiss by Drew. Uh, rock bottom by Roman. Superman punch. And a big spear. Uh, he kicks out. Drew ends up hitting a spear on the barricade to Roman. Austin Theory comes in, tries to cash his in, but Tyson Fury ends up knocking his ass out. Uh, we get a Claymore, but Roman kicks out. Then he does the whole setup, hits the Claymore, but Solo Sokoa comes in and attacks Drew McIntyre. Oh, God damn it, man. When he actually hit the whole comeback and hit the second Claymore... I really thought Drew had it. I'm like, fuck. Because I'm like, the Usos can't... In my head, I'm like, the Usos can't travel. There's no Paul Heyman. There's no one that could interfere this match. And I completely forgot about fucking Solo Sokoa. Fuck, dude. Uh, Drew gets hit with another spear. Or the spear for the win. Roman Reigns, man. It's Tribal Chief. He's unstoppable. He is unstoppable. Like, shit's crazy. They're really going all in. Roman hasn't been pinned in about a thousand days. Champion for almost six, seven hundred days. This is crazy, dude. Like, I really want to know what the hell. Are we really going to have Cody be the one? Like I said, storyline-wise, the Cody thing, once they tell it and, you know, he starts talking about his dad and starts cutting all his great promos. It's going to be good shit. It's going to be good stuff. Like, I feel like I wish they could just make Roman defend the title twice. They do the Cody thing, you know, he defends it. But he can keep the universal one because I kind of want still that rock match, you know what I mean? But, yeah, I thought Clash in the Castle was a fun match. I don't know, the fun uh, pay-per-view.